The Coindesk Spotlight is brought to you by Nexo, the place to earn on Bitcoin, Ethereum, and more. In February, Nigeria banned crypto transactions just within the banking sector. Four months later, the country announced plans to launch a central bank digital currency, the E-Naira. And now, here it is, launching earlier this week, thanks in large part to fintech company Bit, the developer behind the E-Naira, as well as the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank's CBDC. Joining us now to discuss is Bit CEO, Brian Papelka. Hello there, Brian. So, uh, you know, First of all, how did you get it out so fast? What, that must have been a challenge. Is it ready for prime time? Well, that's, that's a good question. Thanks for having me. Good to see you all again. Uh, yeah, certainly a challenge. Um, I think that, uh, you know, the fact that we'd already had a product that was live in uh, the Eastern Caribbean, we'd uh, been working on this for, for many years ahead of this type of launch. Uh, and so we were we were fairly prepared with a product that we just simply had to uh, customize uh, for the Nigerian project specifically. So, um, is it uh, how for how has the rollout been? We've had kind of a few days of data so far, and is it currently being used for anything? And what are some of the specific use cases? Because I think you know, for a lot of people, central bank digital currencies are a very abstract concept. So, how are people on the ground actually using this this week? Yeah, thanks. Uh, it well. You know, the, it's sort of a methodical rollout, typically, which is good for us. We, we like the idea that there are stages. Uh, Nigeria has a very fulsome roadmap for all of the uses that we, we hope to get to over the course of many years, which means that they and we, of course, are in it for the long haul. Um, Post-launch, though, as you can imagine, as we initially roll out, it's really just signups. Um, and so the uh, both the central bank has minted and dispersed uh, digital currencies to several of uh, several key financial institutions. And therefore there are merchants and consumers that are really just getting in the app store, downloading the app and starting to move their traditional currencies over to digital form at this stage. So Brian, how much of a concern is it for Nigerians is it when it comes to privacy um, that this is money that kind of tracks how you spend it in essence? Well, that's right. I think that uh, this is a key question when we go into any jurisdiction, any country is what is the trust factor with the government, with the central bank? What are the concerns around privacy? Um, and so we've certainly seen a lot of debate uh, through social media. Um, and, you know, we, we fully expect that. Um, but what we hope is and what we're seeing is huge interest. Um, there were several million people. But do you just have a sense of what kind of data is being collected by the government and what if what if any privacy um, features are are being used to uh, prevent that? Yeah, I liken the privacy. Sure. I liken the privacy features of this to uh, credit card companies. Uh, you know, the government cannot see individual purchases. They see purchases sort of in bulk. Uh, financial institutions, however, can track uh, specific um, transactions just so that they can monitor fraud, uh, same way you would as a, with, a, with a credit card. Uh, but the government is not tracking individuals. They're not tracking individuals along with uh, individual transactions. It, uh, for them, it's, it's sort of a bulk transaction so that they can see that there is use on the network, basically. What, what does this um, do, do for banking in uh, I'm Nigeria? About, like, where this interest oh, is I'm coming sorry. from? Um, you know, one of the what I, and just to clarify something, um, my understanding is that right now this is only available to people that hold bank accounts. Is that correct? I know that the, one of the ultimate goals is to like help the unbanked. Obviously, that's not the case right now. I guess you guys are working toward that. But when you say that there's huge interest and it's only people with bank accounts, so it's not actually helping the unbanked. So what are the, like, why are people so interested in it? Like, what are, what are, why are they excited about it? And also, like, can you just clarify that you are moving towards, um, you know, extending it to people who don't have bank accounts? Sure. Let me take the latter question first, which is around financial inclusion. Uh, and a bit of a lesson that we learned over the course of rolling out uh, digital currency in Barbados and then through the Eastern Caribbean uh, is that, you know, initially we thought we would go directly provide wallets to those that didn't have bank accounts. Um, but there, there's a there's a key factor in that, which is trust. And it really turned out the lesson that kind of surprised us initially was the idea that um, we needed to really go through the financial, the traditional financial institutions 
uh, establish a sort of a, a baseline of trust that that consumers and bank folks were, were would you know would use digital currency, and then folks that didn't have or were under underbanked uh, sort of had the the trust factor to be able to download the app and start to interact with it. Uh, and so yeah, in within Nigeria, um, it's a fat, real fast follower. We are. Uh, just a matter of, as, as I mentioned, it's sort of a methodical rollout. This is our initial phase, uh, an, a, a phone app specific for uh, folks that are unbanked uh, will be rolling out very soon. Um, it's, a, it's, you know, considered a fast follower for us. Um, and so that, that's how we see the financial in, in inclusion question uh, coming yeah. through. But as far as interest goes, you know, Hard to say this early uh, what the interest is. I imagine it that it has a newness to it. I think people want to understand how it works. Can it work? All right. Uh, what can they use it for? 